Hi everyone, I'm Sean, co-founder and chief hardware architect at Cerebrus Systems. We started Cerebrus with a vision to drastically change the landscape of compute for AI. And today, I'm going to share with you some of the outside-of-the-box thinking that we think is necessary to meet the demands of ML in the future. For those of you who don't know us, Cerebrus began in 2016 at really the beginning of the modern deep learning era. Our mission is to solve the problem of AI compute to build a full AI accelerator solution from chip to system to software. And now we have engineers and customers around the world. What an incredible journey the last few years have been, not just for us as a company, but for the whole ML industry. But I'm here today because we believe we're really just at the beginning of what neural networks can do, and we're already reaching a pace where traditional approaches just can't keep up. In 2018, state-of-the-art neural networks had 100 million parameters, and that's a lot. But in 2019, models like GPT-2 and Megatron, they were 10 to 100 times larger. And then in 2020, we got GPT-3 with 175 billion parameters. And shortly after that, Microsoft announced their Megatron Turing NLG model with 530 billion parameters. That's a half trillion parameters. And there's no end in sight. Tomorrow, we're going to want to run models with trillions of parameters. Now, that's 1,800 times more compute in just two years. Let me say that again. That's 1,800 times more compute in just two years. As a computer architect, and for all of us in the community, this is both exciting and daunting at the same time. So let's look at how we as a community have responded to this unprecedented demand from these ML models. Now the exciting part is that as an industry, we've been hard at work and we've seen some remarkable innovations. In fact, the models I just showed you, they wouldn't have been possible without this innovation. Here are some examples. In the last few years, we've been continuing to improve on process technology. From 16 nanometer to 12 nanometer, and now 7 nanometer chips are used everywhere. We've also seen advanced packaging technologies that enable higher bandwidth memories. We've also, <coughs> we've also seen lower precision numerics, such as FP16 and Bfloat16. And we have new data path designs, such as systolic arrays and tensor cores that drastically improve compute density and power efficiency. Now let's take a deeper look at these improvements. First, let's look at process technology. On the right, I've plotted transistor densities for GPUs over the last 10 years. And as you can see, the process industry continues to improve at an incredible pace. Moore's law is not dead. And we see this trend continuing for the next several years at least. Next, let's look at some of these other innovations. And broadly speaking, I'm going to group these into a category I'm calling architecture and microarchitecture. And on the right, I've plotted a metric, peak flops per transistor. Again, for GPUs also over that same 10-year period. And here, I'm using this metric, flops per transistor, as a rough measure of architecture performance. And what's really impressive is, as you can see, there is also a very he he healthy increase over time. And in fact, it's keeping up and even outpacing Moore's law by a little bit. Now for us computer architects, this is really refreshing to see because architecture matters. Now that's the exciting part. If you look at the last two years, we got about a two times improvement from process technology, that's Moore's law, and we got about a three times improvement from architecture performance. But now comes the daunting part. In that same two-year span from BERT to GPT-3, as we just saw, the ML demands increased 1,800 times. That's a 300 times gap. And how did we, as an industry, meet that need? Well, it all came from system scale-out. In fact, OpenAI trained GPT-3 using 1,000 GPUs. And so when you step back 
the performance gains over the last couple of years have been completely dominated by system scale out. So that's just the answer, right? All we need to do is scale out. The ML demands certainly don't seem to be slowing down. So we might think we can just rinse and repeat the last two years and we can satisfy the demands for the next two years, right? Well, let's imagine what that might look like. We might get another two times improvement from Moore's law. We do have five nanometer and three nanometer in the pipeline. Perhaps there's another three times improvement from architecture, maybe yet higher density compute data pads, maybe different numerics. And then lastly, another 300 times more system scale out. Is that possible? That would mean clusters with the order of 100,000 chips. While technically not impossible, I think we can all agree that it's not practical. In fact, just the sheer cost, power, and physical footprint would be prohibitive. And perhaps most importantly, it turns out that ex existing scale-out techniques, they're in fact not that scalable. And that's because fundamentally, giant neural network models need massive memory, massive compute, and massive communication to tie it all together. And trying to provide all of this across thousands of small devices turns the scaling of all three of these into distributed problems that are interdependent. It becomes an explosion of distribution complexity to get all of this to work together to solve a single large problem. And this complexity grows dramatically as the cluster size grows and becomes overwhelming at large models. So instead, for all of those reasons, with the existing scale-out techniques, we think there might be another 10 times improvement on scale-out, but not much more practically. That would give us cluster sizes on the order of 100,000 chips, maybe. In fact, we're starting to see evidence of this already. When GPT-3 was trained, they used 1,000 GPUs. And shortly after, when Microsoft trained MTNLG, they used 4,000 GPUs. But we believe this scale-out trend is not going to continue much further with existing techniques. So where does that leave us? With the existing approaches, the industry possibly has a path to another 60 times improvement in the next two years. But we need 1,800 times. And that is the grand ML demand challenge that's in front of all of us. We must find ways to substantially improve across the board, to improve process technology beyond Moore's law, to improve architecture by orders of magnitude, and to improve and simplify scale out substantially. All of this is required for us to have any hope of keeping up with the ML demand. So let's imagine what that might look like. Imagine a world where scaling is more balanced, where we can get around 10 to 50 times improvement on process and architecture and truly scalable clustering. Is that even possible? Well, we at Cerebrus believe it is. But only if you think outside of the box, only if you think about the problem differently. And we do that with true end-to-end -end co design In the remainder of the talk, I'm going to highlight some of the possibilities when you really embrace this extreme co-design approach. 